I'm Cheryl Morgan and I teach fourth grade um, and I use guided math groups to teach and reinforce the skills that we do in math class. So my decision to use guided math groups uh, comes from the same reason why you would do guided reading. Every student in my class has different needs and their needs change depending on what we're learning about math class. So at the beginning of a unit you would take a pre-assessment and you would use that pre-assessment to determine the needs of your students. Then you would break them up into groups. You would have students that need um, basic conceptual understandings. Um, maybe they're missing some things from previous grades that need to be reinforced. Um, you would have on grade level groups. And then you would have groups that need extension. In my class, I find that three groups is generally um, a good number to work with for rotations in the time that we have. So in my classroom, what you'll see is me working with one group, introducing new information. You'll see another group doing independent work in Google Classroom. The purpose of that is to sort of give me an idea of what they can do uh, independently of me. Generally, it's review of content that we've already learned. So it gives me an idea of where I need to go as I move forward in the year and where I need to go back and review. And then they're also going to be working um, on the iReady program. And the purpose of that is to maybe fill in any holes that aren't addressed by my instruction or the independent work, or to offer extension opportunities to the kids who need it. I'm nine years old, and I'm in fourth grade, and I'm in Ms. Morton's class. Tell me a little bit about your math groups during so math time. So we're put in math groups how she thinks and what we what she thinks we should do first, what we should do last, and what we should do in the middle. What are those groups? Like what do you do in each group? One year on I the first group when I ready. The second group we're with Miss Morgan and the third group we're doing independent work. Okay. What do you do when you're with Miss Morgan? She teach she helps us learn new things that we're learning and helps us understand a little bit more. What do you do during independent time? Independent time, we're on Google Classroom, and we work on problems that she thinks that we're having a little trouble with, and that what we are um, working with her. Why do you like working in Google Classroom? Because we get to find out our grades, and we don't have to wait, and it kind of helps us to understand a little better. So it helps you kind of get some feedback right away of how you're doing with a topic. Great. And what do you do when you're on iReady? It helps um, us or the principals or our teacher find out where we are in math and reading. And it helps us um, with things that we struggled with in third grade and things that we're ready to learn that we haven't been taught yet. Do you like how Miss Morgan puts you in groups and you get to rotate? Yes, and because you're not all in one class and not everybody is shouting out and we're able to work together at some point in time. So when I design their independent work in Google Classroom, I use Google Forms. Um, the way that it's currently set up is that they will complete about three to seven questions depending on the difficulty. Um, as they, and when they finish and submit the form, they will get feedback that uh, states whether they got the questions right or wrong, and will give them a hint um, based on what the most common errors are that I see with that type of problem. And students are then expected to go back to their notebooks and resolve that problem to try and get to the answer that was given to them. So can they get to the answer once they know what it is? And then they bring those notebooks with them to their group the next day, so we can start by reviewing what they may have missed. What I see at the end of the day um, is a list of all three to eight questions in which students missed each question and which questions were most commonly missed. So I can take that information and use it to create the next independent work the next day to make sure I'm hitting those things that I know that they're missing. A lot of my questions are taken from at least SOLs, um, interactive achievement, or some of my previous classroom tests, questions that I know that they missed. And also, um, I tend to try to put as many um, sort of technology enhanced items as I can on there. So I give them the practice of having to solve them on the computer while writing the information down on the paper. And that transfer is really difficult for a lot of students. 
I think it's important to remember that there's nothing in education that's all or nothing. So if you find that guided math works for some topics more than others, for instance, when we're teaching our kids to use rulers, it might be easier to do that as a whole class because you want them up, moving around the room. I've done STEM projects and experiments and things in math class where it's going to be much easier for me to do that whole group. So you want to choose topics where you know that there's going to be a lot of differences between your students to put them into guided math. So computation, um, things that your pre-assessment shows a wide range of knowledge. That's where guided math is going to give you the most bang for your buck. Um, if you find that it's a skill that nobody in the class is familiar with at all, you might want to introduce the topic whole group and then break into math groups the next day once you see sort of a spread of where your students are progressing. And yes, yeah, so there's a fine looking hand on there and we're going to talk about it. Not, not weird looking at all. Yeah, no, yeah. Okay, well, if you don't think it's weird looking, I'm surprised. I think it's weird looking. Okay, but what I want to do is look at these abbreviations in A, B, C, and D. Okay, so do you see the abbreviations here? Noelle, do you see A, B, C, and D? I don't have the words millimeters, centimeters, meters, or kilometers. I have their abbreviations. So what do you think MM stands for? We need to look at the front. We can't. Millimeter. 